Hello and welcome to the Learn, Learn It YouTube channel. My name is Kara Clifford and I'm here with Chelsea Doman, our Data Science Program Manager here at Learn It. And I wanted to have Chelsea kind of show off some of the things that she's been working on today. Um, Chelsea, tell me what you've been doing today. Well, today we've been redesigning one of our courses with uh, some of the new technologies that are available in Excel these days. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So when you say redesigning, we've been offering a class and you're just making updates with new features and things like that? Mm -hmm. As the technologies improve, we really want to be at the head of all the new innovations. And so we try and do that on a regular basis. Wonderful. Well, I'm super excited. I've actually had a few uh, situations recently where I've been looking for a specific type of chart. Um, a way to visualize my data. And I've been trying the pie charts and the bar charts and they're just not working right. So Chelsea has offered to show me some really cool new chart tips. And I think we've got five different chart types to show you. So Chelsea, do you mind walking me through some of that? Sure. Um, of course, it depends on the type of data that you have, right? <laughs> it oh yeah, our data, on... our data expert knows that. <laughs> So um, as probably anybody who's created charts in Excel, as you well know, um, if you don't have your data set up correctly, then you can't get the right kind of chart. Um, and often, even if you have your data set up well, the visualizations don't end up showing up the way that you want them to. And that's because uh, there really are a lot of specializations for chart types that are out there. Now, luckily, these days in Excel, we have these new chart types that are added to deal with those specializations. I was going to ask you, does this require an add-in or what version of Excel um, do I need to be able to do these things? That's a great question. Uh, having a modern version of Excel, such as Excel 2013 or 2016, it, of course, would be ideal. Okay. Um, in previous versions, it's possible to accomplish these, th these things, but it takes a little bit more rigging up. Okay. Right? All right. Good to know. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and let's jump into Excel and see what we can do. Okay. So what do I have here, Chelsea? Well, it looks like you have a data set where you have some categorical data in your country and division columns. Um, and then you have some manager names that seem to be listed. Um, uh, those are all different individuals, it looks okay. like to me. People. And then we do have a field of cal uh, calculable information, uh, your gross pay column there. So in this case, uh, it depends on really what you want to be able to visualize. I mean, that's the world of charting, right? Yeah. What's the story that you want to tell? Yeah, well, I mean, I think <clears throat> with me, I want to be able to separate this information, not just by an access, right? I've got multiple columns here, and I want all of that information represented on my chart. Mm -hmm. I want to see the divisions, the countries, the managers, as well as that gross pay data. Okay, great. So <clears throat> if you really wanted to be able to show the different managers that collaborated to each in each division, yes. you, what you probably want to see is some kind of division collection, and then the manager's contributions within that category. Okay. So probably the best type of visual for this would be a tree map chart, one of the new chart types that we have in Excel. So I'm going to recommend prioritizing one of your categorical fields. You have a country and you also have division, so why don't you pick one? Um, let's prioritize by country. Great. So what you're going to need to do is select your entire country column. With the label as well? That's right. And then you're also going to need to select your managers and gross pay, but skip over your division. Okay. Now you have a key on the keyboard that's going to help you select. I know, control key. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Great, perfect. And now you're going to go ahead and insert one of your new chart types, which is the tree map. Go ahead and click on that. And it says insert hierarchy chart. That's then, right. Is that what we're we looking at? We have hierarchical data. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. And then you'll see two different types of charts that you can choose from. Tree map is the oh, one that wow. maybe you've seen before. Yeah. So should I select this one here? Sure, go ahead. Okay. Now this isn't quite doing what we want it to do. And uh, that sounds about right because um, this chart actually prefers contiguous data. So what you're going to do is just do a little bit of rigging up here. Let's try it one more time. All right. Okay. Instead of the age-old way of skipping over that column, what I want you to do is actually select it all. Okay. Now just go ahead and insert the tree map. Okay. And it knows wow, that you wanted that. to do it by country. Oh my gosh. Okay, now let's say... Well, what, yeah, what if I wanted it by a division? Okay, now just start your selection from division instead. And then select country? Or and just then leave it out? Leave out country. Mm -hmm. Just going to insert. Oh my gosh, look at that. That's amazing. Pretty cool, huh? That's a great chart type. Yeah. 
Wow, Chelsea, thank you so much. I love that. You're That's welcome. super valuable. You're welcome. Yeah, it's, it's very useful. It's used a lot in uh, the world of finance. So if you're involved in that industry, it's going to be highly advantageous. It's also commonly referred to as a heat map. That's probably okay. how you know it. Yes, that that's how, how I've heard it, uh, heard it before. So in other words, when I have multiple categories, additional columns of data that I want represented in my chart, mm -hmm. I can use this particular tree map chart, and it adds that to it. It includes not only the smaller categories, but that overall. That's right. Wonderful. Yeah. I love it. What else do you have to show me? Uh, let's see. Uh, how about when you have a lot of um, different series of data? Like, for instance, here we have a lot of different employees, and then we have the gross pay for each one of these employees. Okay. Imagine that you need to visualize this. Maybe okay. you needed to tell a story about which, what each employee makes. If you put that on a visual, we have a lot of employees. Yeah, right? quite a few. Okay, so um, we're probably going to want to compartmentalize our message a little bit. That tends to be what we do when we're visualizing okay. our data. So let's say we want to um, instead analyze by buckets. So I, I, I want to determine how many people make between... Uh, 200 to uh -huh. to 500 or and then I want to know everybody that makes from 500 to 700 or, or 800 something uh -huh. like that in that case I'm going to need to lump anybody that makes a gross pay in that range into a particular bucket got it okay. now until recently you've had to actually generate this data manually right yeah. and we all know how to do that because we are the MacGyvers of the data world right? <laughs> we excel users uh, but now we have a new chart type called a histogram chart go ahead and select all that data and then you're going to insert a histogram chart. Go ahead and click there. You'll see you have a few different options, but what I want you to do is select the top left one. Wow, now it's look at that. It made the buckets for you. Pretty cool, right? That's very cool. And uh, about how many people make between 386 and 596 uh, dollars? Um, about 23. That's right. That's amazing. Nice little analysis, right? I love that. Pretty That's good. great. Yeah, you hover right over the top and it tells you. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. And uh, you can absolutely customize all of your buckets, like just like you can with the other visuals, by just right-clicking on a series and, and uh, choosing Using the ribbon, any of the tools up That's here right. to add to it. That's right. Wonderful. Yeah. Already, that's two different chart types that I had never seen before, mm -hmm. and I think Excel did all the work for me. I didn't have to do anything extra. Yeah. That's really <laughs> great news. Good reason to upgrade right there. Right. Um, so you have three more different charts to show me? I do. Wow, I can't believe how many new ones there are. Let's go uh, ahead and take a look at those now. Okay. So in, in our next set of data, <clears throat> oh we gosh. have some information about different divisions. Now, this is actually information about a lot of employees that work in each division. It's just that we've taken out the employees' names. Mm -hmm. uh, but we do want to analyze all these different people who work in each one of these divisions. We want to analyze their gross pay over the last three recorded years. Now, this is, um, this is a kind of analysis that uh, typically has been rather hard to visualize mm -hmm. uh, because we do want to show progress over time. But over each uh, time period, we want to be able to do an analysis that determines the median pay scale. And then uh, we want to determine um, the outlying pay scales. And okay. what is going to uh, help us with this is a box and whisker chart. Great. I would have probably just made a bunch of separate charts that weren't connected. So. Great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so go ahead and insert. I remember where it is from oh, last good. time. Good. Yeah. Wow, look at that. Yeah. So this shows the spread of all of your data. Now, um, <clears throat> each one legend? of these, good question. Let's go ahead and add our Let's legend. Let's add, add a legend. I'm gonna click go. on the plus sign to add that. There we go. There you go. So we have our two, uh, 2013 data that are in the blue boxes. Uh, we do see the divisions across the bottom. Uh, so we can see the general spread of the data. The boxes do generally represent uh, the, the uh, closest data around the median. And then uh, the skinny lines that you see coming out of that tend to represent. The whisker. Yes, the whisker <laughs> tends to represent the spread. Awesome. I mm -hmm. love that. What mm -hmm. a great chart. What else? What's next? Okay. Uh, let's talk about waterfall charts. Oh, we already got it in here. Should I delete it? We do. It? Yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead and delete it. it. <laughs> okay. Look at this set of data. How hard do you think that would be to visualize? It's going to have a really weird access. It's, I mean, all the way from <laughs> 1,700 to 25,000 positive. Yeah, right. It's quite a range. And it's going to need to cross over the X axis. Yeah, that's going to look and, very weird. Right. And it would take a lot of rigging up in order to do this. Actually, I remember having to do a waterfall chart the manual way. Oh, where yeah. We had to hide the negative values and the yeah. hidden ones like a 15-step process. Yep. You'd so have you're to telling me I don't heaven. have to do that anymore. Yep. That's right. Awesome. So uh, what you 
you can do is just select all this data. <clears throat> including that ending balance? Um, yeah, mm -hmm. if you want the starting balance and ending balance to show up on the visual, you can have that too. Okay. Um, I'm going to recommend that you leave out the headers though. Okay. <clears throat> and then go ahead and insert. And you'll choose your waterfall chart, which is this weird, mountainy, up and down looking chart. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay. What? It didn't work. <laughs> okay, let's try it one more time. Let's actually <laughs> grab our headers this All time. right, we needed those headers. You just wanted to <laughs> test me. <laughs> I was going to say, why aren't we adding our headers? <laughs> All right, waterfall chart. Okay. Wow, look at that. Great. Stretch it out a little bit. Okay. All right, so first of all, let's see what we're looking at. Um, by default, Excel doesn't actually know what data is supposed to be starting balances and ending balances. Mm. So you will need to specify that if you want it to be a perfect waterfall chart. Okay. So for instance, this last bar on the right-hand side is showing the ending balance as an in increase in the entire balance, which uh, is not accurate. No. That's a total. Okay. So what you want to do is right-click on that and go down to Format Data Point. And then you're going to choose that little box that says set as total right there. Oh, look ah, at that. Yeah. yeah, it even makes it a different color, right? So even though the starting balance over on the left hand side um, is, it's not wrong, but I would like that for, to be gray as well uh -huh. so that it implies a total. So, so let's do the same, same thing. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, so what we're looking at here is a chart that shows the rises and falls in a single account. Wow, that's mm -hmm. amazing. Pretty neat. So we start off with a. 2,500 balance, go up, start to go back down, 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 back up, and ending balance. Mm -hmm. Wow, I love that. What a great data visualization. And one of the other things that we've learned here is that each one of these charts do have a preferred data setup, right? I mean, we left the headers out of this one, and it fell apart. It did fall <laughs> apart. So, so uh, we are needing to get to know these a little bit before we start using them. But uh, so long as we structure them correctly, man, that was easy, right? So easy yeah. compared to what we used to have to do. Yeah. That was, that's great. Yeah. All right, one more. We got one more. Now, the combo chart Oops. is not brand new. Uh, it's okay that we can yeah. see this here because okay. let's, let's talk about what we're looking at. All right. Uh, let's talk about the problem that we have right now. Um, notice that we do have percent change on the chart. You can see that because it's showing up in the legend, mm -hmm. but you don't actually see it on the visual, oh, do you? Oh, because it's so tiny. Yeah, why is there. it so tiny? Because it's a percent. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so, so it's hard to actually get it to show up on the same visual. Now, uh, in, in earlier versions of Excel, what would we do? We would create a secondary, secondary access. Secondary access, that's what I and, would do. And we had to, to click, click on, on it. it. Now, uh, that's a little bit of work. What I'm going to recommend is that you just go ahead and change the chart type. Oh. It's an option. Mm -hmm. All right. So you can right click on the chart or go to design tab and choose to change the chart type. And now on the left hand side at the bottom of this list, you will see a combo chart. Oh my gosh. Now you just change your percent change to a line chart and look at it. It even suggested axis. it for me. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Go That's ahead and click amazing. Okay. Looks good. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Wow, Chelsea. I can't believe how easy that was. Um, the fact that we had the ability to create five new chart types without any extra work, just a matter of setting up the data properly, mm -hmm. I can't even believe it. Uh, it is, I guess, one good reason to upgrade if you're debating on the upgrade. Mm -hmm. uh, but that was really powerful. And I really appreciate having our data expert here, Chelsea, who does a great job on these classes. Um, if you're lucky, you'll have her teach you a class someday because <laughs> she is the best. So thank you so much for being here. And thank you to all of you guys joining. Um, I look forward to answering questions on these chart types in the comments. And don't forget, you can always sign up to take our new Excel Power User class that covers all of this information. Those will be on the calendar soon. So check out the Excel 2016 Power User Curriculum from our website, learnit.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you. Thank you.